Instagram and Google Plus. What do you think about startups who, who mimic names? Well, I'm in a corporate venture group, but I used to be in marketing, so, so I'll say uh, what you want to do is stand out. And so it isn't necessary for a name to directly represent what you do, because some names are the founder's name, or some names sound like what your company does. So it's not necessary to do that, it's just necessary to be memorable and to avoid copyright infringement. Smart, smart note. Okay, let's start from the bottom back up with help shift. What, is, what did you guys think? I'll, I'll do that one too. <laughs> um, I had a problem with, uh, um, I'll admit that I have lots of different devices and I have a very old Motorola Razor phone and I couldn't figure out what battery to replace. So I went on their website and looked at the FAQs, which were very helpful but not exact. And then there was a chat with an agent. She came on right away. She sent me a new one for free. The whole experience lasted a couple of minutes and it was great. And what I'm seeing here doesn't seem much different. It just seems to be mobile instead of web. So can you explain what's mobile-ish about that experience? We're supposed to have a oh right behind you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, mobile first because it's native in the app. So what you see now is a lot of companies are embedding web views. So imagine if you had that inside an app. It's like when you're viewing, like you're on Facebook, you go to a web page. It's slow, right? Because everything's native. It's all fast. And mobile is about speed. And because you're on the web, it was fast. If you take it to the phone and slow, you would have bounced. You would have been upset. Yeah, I had follow up to that as well. Uh, I, I'm, having worked and uh, listened to a lot of mobile developers, I'm really glad to see there are two companies on stage today that were dealing with developer problems, Instabug and HelpShift. Um, and you know, I think it's easy to underestimate the uh, the pain that a developer has connecting with their own customers. Motorola has a very different set of resources than the two people who are trying to connect with their users and in the app stores today that may be millions of users. One of the things that uh, really impressed me about those two companies is uh, that you allow for a direct connection uh, and a dialogue without having people go outside of the app. Um, and in Instabug's case it allows developers to improve their uh, product, in HelpShift's case it allows you to have a direct connection and some uh, contextual messages as well as uh, triaging with a computerized system. Our best companies, this is the last comment I'll leave you with, our best mobile companies are ones that really do listen to their customers. Uh, so I'm glad that both these companies up here today allow developers to do that better. Excellent. Yeah, um, yeah I agree. Both, I'm really impressed with both those companies. In the, in the mobile world, you have a very short amount of time to create any sort of loyalty or relationship with your customers. And uh, if you don't have a way for them to solve the problem, if you don't have a way for them to share feedback, you could lose them quickly, as well as there's a lot of virality out there. If, if you have a bad experience, all of a sudden you tell all your friends and, and then that company might be done. So let's move on to light. What did you guys think about video, mobile and video? I had a question about it. You were um, showing streams of memories, and um, I was trying to think about what I would do if I wanted to remember this moment, this moment, at this conference, three years from now. How would I find it? Do you have a retrieval system of some sort? Absolutely. So everything you're capturing in life, we're capturing uh, date, time, location, business location through Foursquare. And so the stream is the first way that we're presenting it, but we're going to be layering on many different ways. We also have search right now, so you'll be able to search across uh, everything you have access to or just within your own streams. It'll be very simple. You know, I, I think uh, journaling and kind of memory-related uh, apps historically have had a tough time because you've got to do a lot of work before you ever see the payoff. Um, do you have thoughts as to how you will be different from them? 
Well, right now, um, in light, you get a payoff right away because it's so easy to start posting. And I think we've uh, bridged the gap between personal memories and also making it social. So we've got all the social aspects as well to allow you to share it right away and let other people come and comment as well. So it's, um, it's sort of crossing both of those spectrums between personal and social. Excellent. Well, we have about 30 seconds left, so let's talk quickly about People Plus. I thought this was super interesting. Um, if you could uh, get over the empty room problem, I mean, it, it, it's hard to tell from the demo video, but if you require all those other people to also have the app in Google Glass, then how do you sort of kickstart you know, people using it and getting value? So actually, we don't look into just simply pulling other people with the Google Glass app. It's about taking the information that you already have in your contact information and sort of spread over the, the uh, digital uh, landscape of the web and tying it together very tightly for you and just sort of cleaning out a lot of the noise plus adding in a lot of uh, additional sort of introductory data as well. So it's how, do you, how do you how do you know who else is nearby if you if they don't have to have the app? There's a lot, I mean, frankly, there's a huge amount of ambient data um, that is around that people expose, whether it's through Foursquare check-ins, um, Facebook check-ins as well, and if you have a social interrelationship with those people or they're exposing it publicly, you can start off with that. There's also other features that are coming online in the near future, different protocols associated with um, uh, new Bluetooth protocols, as well as uh, a bunch of LTE protocols that are coming up in the relatively near future. All right, quickly, let's do uh, Lettuce apps. Anyone have a, a thought there? No. Uh, yeah, so just curious, uh, on the back end, how does customer, who handles customer service, who's responsible? There's chargeback fraud dispute, stuff like that, is that? Yeah, so the mobile application is just one part of our system. We have a full web-based application that is really the order management hub. Uh, in that we have the ability to do invoices, orders, credits, returns, uh, refunds, etc. And so, so if I'm getting your question correctly, so oftentimes when uh, companies start to use a different payment provider or a different backend service provider, oh, okay. and there's an issue, yeah, people start to point fingers. So just kind of curious who takes responsibility for that. So we, and, yeah. so we integrate into different applications. So for example, for credit card processing, we integrate into Stripe, and Stripe has a pretty great policy about recovering those issues. What I like about Lettuce is there's an opportunity to really save time. So salespeople can focus on selling more. You can choose whatever channel that you want to sell through. And you can integrate with whatever, whatever application you want. Um, I guess the question would be, you know, what, um, what are some of the target verticals that you've been going after? So we built Lettuce to be a, a horizontal product that any industry can really use, but we've been testing a lot of different verticals, and, and a couple of those verticals have been like the home decor, fashion, um, and also just in general, the, our target audience right now is sales reps. Um, there's over 14 million sales reps in the United States alone, uh, so it's a pretty vast market that, that, that has a lot of potential to be disrupted. Jeremy, awesome shirt. Uh, and then let's have, it is, oh, that is pretty funny. Um, let's have one quick comment for Instabug. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anybody? I think it's too bad that you were in the same batch as the company that sort of seems to do a superset of what you guys do. Excellent. I used to be a designer. I love the design. I think it's gorgeous. Thank you. Excellent. Well, thank you so much to our early stage companies. If you could give them a round of applause. Really, a nice presentation. Okay, now we are going to.